rollover from the uh, the Channel Islands funds? Yeah. Okay, I want to put everything on number six. Everything. The fuck do you mean the Derby was yesterday? Did six win? <laughs> Dodge that landmine. Okay, talk to you later. Hi, welcome back to Kevin Pollock's chat show. I am not Kevin Pollock. I'm Sam Levine. What a terrible mistake you've made today. <laughs> So, uh, Kevin Pollack cannot be here. He is traveling from the great state of Indiana. Why he's there, I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine a reason for anyone to visit Indiana. But Kevin, we love you, we miss you. Please travel home safely so that I don't have to do this and annoy our loyal listeners and viewers. Uh, I'm very excited to be back. I was gone myself for three whole weeks or however the hell long it turned out to be working in Florida, and I can't imagine why anyone would ever travel to the state of Florida. If you are only listening to the show, boy, are you missing out on some great visual gaps. It means taxes. The That's right. Thing, rubbing his fingers together. <laughs> so please, uh, let's say hello to uh, the people who help make the show fun with me, Jamie Foxx and Corey Levin. Hey, guys. Howdy. How you doing? I'm just here to talk to my mom. Mom, please turn your phone back on. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let's talk this out. It's Mother's Day, for Christ's sake. Well, it sure is. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... No, it's okay. ...on the, the energy of what's going on today. No, no, no. We're, we'll get to that. Uh, I'm we'll talk certainly to my mom, that. but she doesn't think that the internet's real. It is not. So... It's a series of tubes. Yeah. I think we all know that. Uh, but as you guys did just point out, it is, in fact, Mother's Day. So if everyone could stop watching right now except my mom, I'd just like to have a little one-way chat with you. I'm uh, Happy Mother's Day. I, uh, I hope you like the gift that I sent you. And if you don't, it came from Max. OK, everyone else can tune back in now. Um, I'm, I, I, we, is there any other old business or new business we need to get to um, that, that I, I should be concerned with? I'm dying to get to our guest because it's just it's, he's such a, such a sweet kid. I just love him. I just want to covered everything. You, you can read the minutes the from last week's meeting. After oh yeah, the we covered the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm going to get right to it, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> wrote him a lovely intro. I'm real proud of it. My guest today is not just a friend, but my actual oldest friend in Los Angeles. He's an Academy Award watching actor, writer, and now director. His television work dates back to the last century, where he got his start on Freaks and Geeks. Since then, he appeared on 140 episodes of Fox's Bones, which I swear I'm going to check out one of these days. And in the feature films Waiting, View from the Top, and Rapture Palooza. The last several years have seen him make a seamless transition behind the camera, with he and his writing partner Jonathan Goldstein having written the Horrible Bosses movies, as well as writing and directing Vacation, just to name a few. These days, he may well be known as the guy writing the new Spider-Man reboot, but to me, he'll always be that 13-year-old little bitch who cried when a bird shit on him. Please welcome John Daly. Cheers. Yeah. So you're not Kevin Pollack. No. Ooh, People this make is, this mistake a lot. This is not going to be fun. No. For you, either of us. No. You've made a dreadful decision. I really fooled you. You have, with the beard. <laughs> Johnny Samarama. We that's I I knew this would not we were not going to get one minute into the show without you and I talking to each other like we do in real life. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's terrible. I really <laughs> never thought anyone would ever be let in on our little insane circle. Now they know. And now they know that when you and I talk to each other on the phone, the first minute to three minutes of the conversation is us. And I know you're a little under the weather, so I'm not going to make you do it. It's us trying to see who can get their voice pitched higher to say hello when we say the other one's name. And uh, just a real quick taste of that for our listeners. And apologies to Mike and the sound booth, but it's got something like, Daddy, Sammy. Yep, see, there it is. We do that for several minutes it's before not, we. It's not just Johnny that you call me, though. That's let's, true. Let's be clear on what that to, real nickname to, to is. To be true, my full nickname for John is Johnny Lingus. <laughs> I call him Johnny Lingus because uh, he well. flew Air Lingus one time. And that's the clean version of that story. <laughs> the Irish version. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to have you here. I've wanted you uh, to be a guest on this show, regardless of who was hosting, for so long now, because um, I love you. And my god, you have literally never stopped working. You have <laughs> so <laughs> many friggin' stories. And uh, let's start. <clears throat> with the Nyack Middle School production of Grease, where I believe you played Danny. Yes, the Danny. Zuka. The Danny. This was what started it all, I want to say. 
Or was uh, this after Tommy? This was actually after Tommy. I was nine when I did Tommy. So talk about a step down. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so wait, let's take it back then to Tommy. So when you were nine years old, mm -hmm. you, you were in the touring production all over the world, right? Yeah, it was, uh, it was mostly in America. We did okay. the national tour uh, across the country, and then yeah. uh, we did <sighs> three months in Germany. Ooh. Uh, post war. Oh. So it was less That's, less bad than you thought. Right, and also you're only half Jewish, so you right. don't really have to worry about <laughs> right. it. Uh, my name is not, which is which distinctly is not Jewish. Very safe for yeah. me. Uh, but no, it was it was a crazy experience for a kid to have. I remember the first day that I had to actually go on stage. The shits I had oh. were insane. Really? Oh, incredible. Are we talking? This is so. This is stress poo. Oh, the worst stress poo. Not from eating have. all that schnitzel. No, 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 no. <laughs> Try to imagine nine-year-old me, just fauceting oh. for a full minute without stopping. Wow. That. I mean, I know 30-year-old you, and he has a similar problem. <laughs> it's so, true. <laughs> so maybe it's more than half Jewish. Maybe it's more like 60 to 70%. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's definitely something unique to my people. Indeed. Mm. So, so you were on the, doing the, the Who's Tommy, playing young Tommy. Um, was it difficult to act blind? You know, I'm kind of blind to most of the world as it is, That's so true. it wasn't that much of a stretch for me. Okay, great. Uh, it was actually a lot harder than you'd think because he's not actually blind. He's he's severely autistic, which oh. prevents him from seeing or hearing the world. I don't know if you ever saw the show. No, I don't see any of your work. Because he, in the song I'm Free, actually right. regains all of his senses. Oh, how about that? Yeah. I should probably check that show out at <laughs> some point. It's a good show. Yeah. It's a good show. If I, if I watched uh, The Who's Tommy, the DVD from the 70s, are you in that? I am. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a sperm. Okay, then I'm definitely going <laughs> to check that one out. So then you go from Tommy all over the world, back home to Nyack, New York. And then we did Greece. And then you did Danny in <laughs> Greece. Yeah. Now, did you come rolling onto that stage acting like a big swing and dick, like, hey, guys, I was Tommy in Germany, maybe you heard about my, my incredible shits. That's, what, that's, uh, that's how I introduced myself. Yeah. And nobody knew Tommy, my, no. nobody my age at least. No, they, I guess not. When I told them I was in The Who's Tommy, they would just hit they me. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically my life. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so that's, now obviously with I, I, you, I mean, I, there's so much that I feel like, oh, we don't need to talk about this because we obviously know that I know it. Right. But I want to inform our, our listeners Please, and viewers. let's pretend we don't know each other. So um, your dad, uh, the magnificent Bob Daly, professionally known as R.F. Daly, uh, was a seasoned uh, theater actor. Yeah. Had been all over Broadway, stages all up and down the coast. And so that is that the main reason? I know your mom, Nancy, always been a musician. Um, so w growing up in this household, that was, it was just in your blood. There was no escaping the theatrical aspect of Right. Life. Yeah, and that was, that was pretty much my life, uh, or my, my childhood for 10 years. I would, uh, on the weekends, do my homework in the dressing room of whatever mm. show my dad was on, surrounded by naked gay men. <laughs> Well, and uh, and uh, then uh, I would go to the Marriott or the Waldorf or wherever my mom was playing yeah. and singing and uh, finish my homework there. Huh. And that was my routine every weekend. Wow. I wasn't, you know, hanging out with people my age. Or no, no, like that. God forbid. Yeah. Uh, well, but so I was surrounded by it, and and ultimately realized that it was something that I I really wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, and look look what happened to you being raised like that. You, you see this, parents? Let this stand as a warning. <laughs> that means nothing. He's very successful. I'm a mess. Um, uh, so, uh, so then you and I, I guess, at that point, had a pretty similar experience, mm -hmm. uh, save for me not having the uh, theatrical uh, artistic family. But then cut, you would commute in from Nyack down into Manhattan for auditions. Yeah. On a, how, how many times would you say you were in on any given week? Uh, I turned down a lot of auditions just because it was such a hassle for me to yeah. skip school and then have to, uh. you know, and I was not getting any work. I was not getting any job. I got like two Nickelodeon commercials yeah. uh, over the course of four years after Tommy. And, uh, and so after a while, I just, I, 
I kind of gave up to a certain extent because it was just so much work and having to commute and and putting my you know putting my my mom or dad out and in, in you know having to drive in traffic. Yeah, I remember that bridge. Van. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we drove a, a Saturn at that point. Oh my God. Yeah, we had we had two Saturns. We were a family of Saturns. <laughs> I don't think they make Saturns anymore. I feel like they've gone out of business. You know, yeah, because I, of us. Because of you guys. Uh, but it was. Uh, I at a certain point I, I thought you know this isn't this isn't worth the trouble because they're hiring all these super cute kids that mm -hmm. are blonde and Aryan looking and yeah and at I a certain know point about that <laughs> <laughs> at a certain point I just you know I, uh, I I stopped and then Freaks and Geeks came along so how how long had it been before, since you auditioned before Freaks and Geeks um you mean since I started acting? No, since like you said, you stopped for a while. Was yeah. Freaks your first audition back, or had you had a couple other? No, it, ones? it had been months. It oh wow! Months. Yeah. How about that? I did not know that. Yeah. I thought I thought you were out there because I know one job shortly before Freaks and Geeks that you absolutely did book. Oh, yeah. was a little short film called Allard Fish Finds in Love. That's right. Where I feel like if we went back and found the old sign-in sheets mm -hmm. from that audition, I feel like you and I must have been separated by a matter of minutes. Truly. Yeah. I, we might have actually met we might have knowing met. it. Yeah. I would have been like, who's that little punk? <laughs> that little 13-year-old punk? Who's that bearded 16-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. For those of you who don't know, I've had the beard since I was 16. That was makeup they put on my face in Freaks and Geeks to right. cover it up. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, so then, yeah, I, uh, I was real angry I didn't book that short film. And then years later when we were working on Freaks, I found out you did and I hated you for it. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven you. Well, you look, didn't really miss much. Look where that film took you. <laughs> so then, uh, cut to February of 99. You get the call for uh, Kitchen Confidential. Mm -hmm. Is my timing off? A little bit. I feel like my research is off. Um, you get the call for a little show called Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. And, uh, and you convinced your parents. You're like, well, or you're, I'm guessing your agent convinced your parents. They, I, re I read the script and I, I really liked it. Uh, it was different from all the other things I had been auditioning for because most of those were Disney Channel or Nickelodeon shows that yeah. were stupid. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, and then my, my folks read it and I was really under the weather at the time. Much oh, like I am now. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I uh, there was a part of me that, that didn't want to go because it, I just, thought about all the homework I'd have to make up. I knew mm -hmm. I wasn't going to get it. What was the point? <laughs> and uh, my dad was like, this is a really good one. I think you might want to go out for it. Yeah. And so I did and didn't think anything of it. And then, a, I don't know, a week later, I found out that they wanted me to come back in. Mm -hmm. So then I, then I read it for, uh, I read for Paul and oh, Judd yep. and Jake, all in New York. Yep. And much like your story, yep. then they flew uh, they flew us out to, to screen test for it, yeah. and they paired me up with uh, with Lauren Ambrose actually. Oh wow! Yeah. For for Lindsay. For Lindsay. How about that? Mm -hmm. I think I heard that once, but since that doesn't concern me at all, I just <laughs> forgot, forgot <laughs> right. all about that. I, I apparently Jesse Eisenberg also auditioned for that. I knew about really. Yeah, because I used to see him at auditions in New York all the time. And we would talk about what we were going up for and not in that horrible New York kid actor way right? where it was like oh so uh, you know you didn't read for Freaks and Geeks oh weird I feel like that would have been right up your alley anyway they're testing me so it's probably not even worth your time like it was never anything like that well I'm glad yeah it was always nice you stuff you would have been a dick right <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah no he booked that show Get Real the same year I think oh. for Fox I don't so I get, it worked out for him I, I hear he's doing fine Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, uh, we're all doing fine. I mean, you've got your big movie career. He's, uh, you know, in the new uh, Superman movie, and I'm on the internet. So I feel like everybody got exactly what was supposed I'll to happen. I'm not Sam. complaining. I you love know what? Internet. I'm not going to listen to you and your self-deprecation you for to. this hour. You have to. You have to. You know why? Because it's Kevin Pollock's chat show. <laughs> God damn it. We have to change that when I host. We really do. <laughs> um... So, okay, so we both have our own little stories. We got flown out. We tested for the thing. I did not see you at the test. Mm -mm. They tested us, I guess, either on separate days or, or what have you. But then I do know that the first time you and I ever met, mm -hmm. uh, my mother and I and you and your dad, we were all on the same flight out of JFK 
into Los Angeles to shoot the Freaks and Geeks pilot. I remember vividly. V as do I. Your first words. What were my first words to you? Well, you introduced you? yourself. Right. And, uh, and then you said, uh, come by my, uh, my uh, row and we'll chat. And you, and you went away and I looked at my dad and I'm like, chat? Right. He's like, kid, why is he using that, that yeah. word? And here you are on Kevin Pollack's chat show. <laughs> well. So I feel like full circle. <laughs> exactly. Full circle for now this ridiculous I get it. story. Yeah, you were, and you, and to this day, 17 years later, uh, you won't let me forget that I walked up to you and I was like, hey, because my mother and I were in like, you know, row four, mm -hmm. and you and your dad were in row one. And I was like, hey, if you guys want to switch seats, you know, John and I, we can chat. And then you've mocked me mercilessly <laughs> for being a mature 16-year-old. Very mature. Let's not forget the beard. Oh, you had a serious beard back then, too. Do you know I had to shave every day when we shot that thing? Did That's, you really? Yeah. Even when we shot the pilot? Yeah. You were... 16. 16? I was, I was, when we shot the pilot, actually, um, when we had, we had, remember, we had a week of rehearsals. Yeah. Which, knowing what we know now right. about how the industry works, that's unheard of. No, it's a luxury. <laughs> you don't get that in television. And so we had a full week of rehearsals, and the very end of that week of rehearsal was when uh, I turned 17. That's right. And there's a, there's remember, a photo. Yeah, I remember. Of you and thing. me and, and Marty and Judd and Jake and Paul and Seth. Those were the days. With a little, with a little birthday cake. God, I should tweet that. I think Judd tweeted it a while ago, but he got a lot of it wrong. Really? <laughs> tweet it again. What did he say you were like no, 25? I, think, I don't remember what he said. I don't know. I'll have to look. Anyway, I, I just for a split second, I was like, we're not, I'm not doing a show right now. We just we can reminisce about <laughs> this. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so we, we got out there, and then I remember when we shot the pilot, uh, because you, me, Marty, and Seth mm. were all teenagers, were right. all actual teenagers in real school. Yeah. We all had to do on-set tutoring. Mm -hmm. Which is not real school. No, not even a little bit. No. We learned absolutely nothing. I feel like I was reading Stephen King's Insomnia. <laughs> were you? For the bulk of that tutoring. Uh -huh. Yeah, I feel I like that, that that was the chosen work I had, had given to myself. And uh, I remember we had to watch a couple of VHS uh, videos mm -hmm. of, I don't remember what, yeah, any idea? For research, we, well, they had us watch Zero Effect. You remember that? Oh, that's that? right. Yeah, Jake's we watched Zero movie. Effect. Yeah. That was uh, Jake Kasdan's first movie. And uh, he made it when he was, what, 21 22, or something 22, yeah. Like that. 22 yeah. years old. Uh, I guess we saw that just to get the tone of, yeah. of the show. And then something else. I uh, well, I know they had at one point given us Caddyshack. Right. Because you and Martin hadn't seen it. Right. Uh, and I would have, at that age, and still today, take any opportunity to rewatch Caddyshack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I know that was one of the ones we watched because yeah. they wanted us, because we all had to do uh, Bill Murray impressions. And if you saw my Bill Murray impression, you would think that I hadn't seen it. Because <laughs> it wasn't good. No. No, it, it, it doesn't help that I had like a woman's voice. <laughs> it's, it's impossible to. I could have done like a Hillary Swank impression. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine Hillary Swank uh, in Caddyshack doing uh, the Bill Murray role? Now I can't stop yeah. imagining. Yeah, that's like uh, uh, Charlize Theron doing Beetlejuice <laughs> in Monster. That's right. Which is they gave her an Academy Award for that. I mention this any chance I can get. Go ahead and rewatch the movie Monster, uh -huh. realizing that Charlize Theron is doing Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all over for you. It's all over. It's like how Kevin always says that um, Al Pacino in Son of a Woman is doing Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is accurate. That's, That's fully accurate. Um, one of the things I remember about you when we started shooting uh, Freaks and Geeks, once it got picked up to series, was that you decorated your trailer. Yes. And one of the posters in your trailer was like a kung fu related poster. Yes. Because you were very into the martial arts back then. I was. Then. Are you still into the martial arts? No. No. No, 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 no. But you were a black belt. You were very proud. Second degree. Jesus. Junior. Well. Which doesn't mean it's It's all not. the same to me. Yeah. Do you, so uh, I always felt safe, you know, in case any ninjas showed up. Was that, was that a fair assumption? That I, I was mean, safe with you? Ninjas had shown up, and I kept them at bay. You probably didn't even know. I did not know. Yeah. So then I guess we all owe you a huge debt of gratitude after the fact. In the late 90s, ninjas were a real problem on TV set. <laughs> <laughs> we really, we, we owe a great degree of thanks 
to to, to to you and our SAG representatives for clearing that problem up <laughs> that for us. Problem, <laughs> that ninja problem, ninja <laughs> problem, TV set. Um, I don't know that I had any hobbies I brought to Freaks and Geeks other than being just an arrogant nerd. Masturbating. Nah, it wasn't even a hobby back then. <laughs> really? It's more of a lifestyle. Okay, I well, don't same. Know. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, were gross. I mean, it, yeah. It, oh, we were terrible. We were doing a show at the worst possible age to be on television, A, yeah. and off television. Yeah. No, it's a good thing the show was not popular or successful at that time. Yeah. Because we were already just awful people to begin with. And then being given that platform. Right. Uh, but I mean, Judd and, and, and Paul really, I mean, we've heard them talk about this in interviews, and in hindsight, I have to agree, like they went out of their way to keep us at, in check. Yeah, they kept us humble. All the time. For sure. All the time. Like they would, I mean, I, I, they put Martin in that lady's bathrobe mm -hmm. uh, it, when he had to be in the locker room. They stopped letting us get makeup put on our pimples. Is that true? That is true. Oh, you didn't know that? Maybe you didn't have any zits. <laughs> but yeah, they, Judd told the makeup department to stop covering up our zits. Oh, wow. Um, which... It must have been pre-pubescent still at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You, uh, you, you talked a big game. In my high voice. In your high voice. In your high lady's voice. I was very hyper. If you look at on YouTube, at yeah, behind, the, the, behind scenes, the scenes, I was... Uh, no, I remember. I was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Unruly. Linda was, I know you've described it as unbelievably patient. With she you. was. She indeed. was great. She was so sweet to all of us. Yeah. But especially oh, you. Delightful. Yeah. Um, it was it was weird because uh, Martin and I were both seventeen, mm -hmm. and then you had just turned fourteen. Yeah. And so there, I mean, that's there's a chasm oh my God. of difference there between those ages in teenagers. In adult years, that's like thirty years. Yeah, that's thirty yeah. years. Because <laughs> Martin and I were both driving ourselves to work. Yeah. And uh, and then you and your dad had the minivan. That's right. And I remember one time uh, we had tandem parking. You remember the shitty tandem parking yeah. they gave us at, at on the studio lot. That's when you're not, you know, you're not on a successful show. It's when they make the actors park in these horrible tandem spots that uh, every day at 11 a.m., some a PA would come running in and go, Sam, Sam, do you have your keys? Do you have your keys? You're blocking in James Franco. Even back then, he had more pull. And, uh, and I remember one time I parked behind you and your dad, and I guess I got a little too close, and I chipped the paint on the back bumper mm. of your dad's car. Not cool. And it was not cool at all. And your dad came out, and he's like, hey, watch how you park, because look, you chipped the bumper. And I was like, I'm really sorry. Uh, how can I fix it? And he was like, I got it. I got it. Just be aware. I was like, OK. Wow. Not, not nasty, I got it. It was like, I'm, I'm not retelling that story right. He was like, oh, don't worry about it this time. Like, I got it. This time. But you better fucking watch it. And from that day for the rest of the shoot, I literally never parked behind your dad's car. <laughs> I was so afraid of chipping the paint again. How did he fix it? I don't know. I think he just keyed. He probably just keyed the rest. Your car. <laughs> <laughs> just, maybe he committed insurance fraud. I don't know. We can speculate. I, I, I remember it was like a serious uh, revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then there was the time I straight up smashed into Franco's car. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this one? I don't. I mean, okay. his car was so messed his up. His car was so messed up yeah. to begin with, but I put a bowling ball size dent behind his rear tire, uh -huh. pulling in at an awkward angle. Did he thank you for giving it more <laughs> character? <laughs> and I, was, I felt so bad about it. So then I parked and I went to set and I found him and I was like, buddy, I feel terrible, but I really smashed up your car. And he was like, what'd you do? And I'm like, I put a really big dent behind your tire. He's like, can I still drive it? I was like, yeah. He's like, it's cool. He's and cooler then, than my dad. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> That's what we've learned. Yep. <laughs> James Franco and your dad are not the same level. No. Of He's slightly cooler than slightly my dad. Slightly cooler, but not by much. <laughs> Bob, sweet Bobby D is a pretty cool cat. He's cool for a dad. He's for really sure. cool for a dad. Yeah. He let you get away with fucking murder, didn't he? Literally. And, yeah. Whoa. Should we talk about that? I don't want to talk about that. Okay, no. we won't talk about that. Uh, hmm. So this leads me, uh, prematurely I might add, but since we're already in this uh, zone, yeah. I don't want to stray too far. We have a segment on the show uh, called Famous Questions, okay. which uh, is not as it sounds. These are not the well-known uh, inside the actor studio questions. It's not that. These are questions from famous people to our guest. 
These were, this question was asked specifically for you to answer by a famous person. I will ask the question, and then you can guess who you think wrote this question for you. So here's the question. <clears throat> Why do you think your acting was so flawless on Freaks and Geeks? There is not a false note in the entire series. How did you experience doing that work? So this is a famous question from someone I know. It's, well, that's a, that's a question from a famous person who you definitely know. For my you. mom? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like no. my mom. No, no, not your mom. Not your mom. Uh, I don't know. Um, was it Paul Feig? Close. Judd Apatow. That is Judd Apatow right. asked that question of you. And I am inclined to agree with it. Uh, your acting was flawless. Oh. There is not a false note in it. And, and uh, um, is your answer the same as mine, which is it's because they wrote it to us? No. Okay. No, that's not. Okay. I think it's just because I'm really good, Sam. You don't have to tell me. I saw you in uh, Rapture Palooza. <laughs> I guess I deserve that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think to, to answer that question, I would say yes. They, they wrote to us, yeah. and we were always encouraged to just be ourselves. Yeah. And so it was also a testament to to them. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he knew when he asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking for more praise yeah, he knew for the two of us. Well, mission accomplished, Judd. <laughs> Thank you for giving us the gift of just playing ourselves and making it look so flawless. Thank you. Jesus. Um, so, uh, so we shot that thing for what felt like five years, mm -hmm. but in reality was seven months, eight months. I mean, we started really? shooting it in July of 99 yeah. and stopped shooting in March of 2000. Wow, it wasn't even a that's, full year. That's, that's eight, crazy. That's eight months, yeah. That's pretty crazy. That is crazy. And it felt like such an enormous part of our lives and still does. Well, I mean, if it were a crappy show, it probably wouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got the regular Joe questions coming up. <laughs> what do you See? mean? That's my favorite. <laughs> See, my proudest I could, work. I would never say that to anyone but you. <laughs> or Daniel Stern. Or Daniel Stern. I wouldn't, we had him on the show. I didn't mention it. Really? We didn't mention it. Oh, that's not cool. No, actually, we did ah. mention it, but I didn't put the show down. <laughs> not like I would do you. Probably good. Because you didn't probably write good. it. Hopefully, Danny Stern is not watching this. He and didn't if anyone, write it either. No, I know. Yeah. No, it was actually, well, we're not going to get it. it we was, don't have to go down that road. It was fine. You were in it. I was. You played Sweaty. I sure Wasn't did. Your, your character name? Yes, I was. That was the second time you and I got to work together. Yeah. Just so audiences know, Regular Joe was a short-lived ABC uh, sitcom. Yep. Sam Levine and I eh, were both in. Please. You were a regular on it with Danny Stern, Judd Hirsch. That's right. Uh, Will Friedle. Uh, Kelly Carbosh. Mm -hmm. uh, am I pronouncing that correctly? Carbosh, yeah. Carbosh. Uh, uh, how is she? Have you seen her? No. No, neither have I. I. I know she's married. I hope she's well. Kelly, reach out if you're there. <laughs> we miss you. You got on my case one time. Uh, this is not an appropriate podcast uh, conversation. Can't but wait. You know where I'm going with this. One time when you were shooting regular Joe, I was hanging out with you in the dressing room. And uh, I was hanging out with you and Jonathan Goldstein uh -huh. uh, and uh, Kelly. And uh, and we we're just sitting there, and I farted. Yeah. And I wasn't like it wasn't like I tried not to fart. Like no, you I, just did I leaned over and farted, and then it was not a big deal in my mind. But then you and Jonathan made a huge deal out of it, and I was like, "What?" And you guys were like, "There's a lady present," and yeah. all I remember my answer immediately was, "She's got a boyfriend." <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to put on the front for her. I don't have to act like I'm some decent person. Ugh. There's nothing going on You're there. The worst. That was one of my favorite things I've ever done, and least favorite things I've ever uh, done. Yeah. Simultaneously. Do you still fart in front of ladies as long as they're not single? Yeah, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> no. No, I've uh, I keep the farting uh, okay. strictly to you. Now. I would love to hear you fart live on this show. I want you to know I had terrible gas before, but mm -hmm. it's since gone away. Oh, crap. I know. I was really hoping I could save some, because to fart on cue for you right here would make me happier. I would than love it. But Missed you opportunity. I'm no. sorry? We all would have loved to see that. No. Oh, Look, God. this is a lob mic. I will just pull it down there. We can all enjoy it. It could still happen. Listen, listen. I don't want to make any judgment calls on what is and is not going to happen in the next hour or so. It would Play be it amazing, fast and loose here. amazing television. Okay. Well, saying. this is internet the internet television. <laughs> um, speaking of internet television, 
So uh, post Freaks and Geeks, which we may circle back to, I know uh, the questions from the audience is pouring in, and I'm not going to ignore them. Uh, but I want to uh, sort of keep things chronological here. So I know after uh, Freaks and Geeks, when you were working on the Gina Davis show, that's where you and Jonathan Goldstein yeah. first met. And I remember shortly after that, sometime, and I want to say it was in 2001, you guys wrote and directed that short, What mm -hmm. Babies Do. Yeah. Which I remember when you showed me, it's ridiculous, but it's very funny. It was a stupid short, yeah. But it's really funny. Now, can people still find that online? I don't know. It was on, uh, remember iFilm? That I do, and that's why we were talking about Silly Internet, is yeah. I remember your first directorial debut, your first directorial debut, not your second one, was on the internet. Yeah, it was, I, it was on iFilm and Adam Films, which was another. Adam Films, yeah. And quickly swallowed by YouTube when when that yeah. came out, but yeah. uh, I don't I don't know I don't probably well, not. Can you give me a copy of it? Because I'll gladly put it online for you. I don't think I have a copy of it, and if I do, it's on VHS. That's well, I can still transfer. Oh, I got okay. I got all the old stuff set up at home. Yeah, perfect. Because you know why I don't I don't give anything away. <laughs> That's right. I'm like my You're father. A hoarder. I'm a hoarder. Like my father and his family before him, I give nothing away because you never know, John. When, when, when young John Daly is going to hand you what babies do on VHS and yeah. say, put this on the internet. You never know if you're going to need 2,000 DVDs, which is what you have at your I house. I have not purchased a new DVD in years. <laughs> because they don't make them anymore. That's correct. That's the only reason why. They've just stopped producing them. Um, your, your DVD collection, I'm sure it's been brought up at some point. On I have a photo of it on my phone. Do you? Oh, mm -hmm. it, is, put that it is remarkable. <laughs> It's sweet of you to say. It's for personal use. I'm not showing sure. it. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. It's an entire <laughs> wall of your, your personal house. personal files. When, oh, what? do you know what just occurred to me? What's you up? haven't been in my home in years. It's been a while. It doesn't look a thing like that anymore. You don't proudly display your DVD no, collection No, they've been anymore? in books for years. Okay. I had to get rid of the wall. That was an early 20s mistake. And you know what? I'm not even going to call it a mistake. That was an early 20s prideful thing uh -huh. that when I got into my late 20s, I decided was hideous. Right. And it was mostly because I had a girlfriend at the time who was adamant that that was ridiculous. And I eventually had to listen to her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when you get into a relationship, you realize all the crazy mistakes that you were making before yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, most of them have to do with aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, and just lifestyle choices in general. Yeah. And then you wonder how you got into that relationship in the first place when you were already like that. Did they see you and think, I can fix him? Yeah. That is what it is, right? Totally. I think they, they, they come into the relationship forgiving us for yeah. all of the stupid shit that we're doing. Well, that's nice. And then they, uh, and then they proceed to, to help us real, uh, learn the, uh, the, the ways of the adult. The errors of our yeah. young, youthful ways. That's true. Yeah. God, I, uh, I really never thought about it that way. I think I'm going to go back to the old way because uh, I at least like myself more. Yeah. And that's not true. That's not true. Wow. I don't mean that. I don't this mean is, that. This is getting candid. This got weird. I knew this was going to get weird. There was no way I was going to have you here and keep this professional and on point. I think it's going to end with both of us weeping. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't end with us weeping and me farting, this is a failure. I know. This is an absolute failure. Um, hey, do you remember uh, when Freaks and Geeks was on television for one month and then the geniuses over at NBC thought, well, the show doesn't have any viewers. No one knows it's on. Let's get a couple of the cast members to New York to put them on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. That'll help really help promote the show. Yeah. And, uh, and so they had you and me and Linda and Becky all on the Mother Goose float mm -hmm. in a frigid, cold, rainy... Uh, Thursday morning in New York. Yeah, we were in a watering can, right? A giant yeah. watering can. <laughs> yes. Nobody wants to see a giant watering can. They want to see Snoopy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Yeah. How well do you remember it? I remember it vividly because I didn't get to spend Thanksgiving with my family because of that. Really? Yeah, well, they had already moved out to, I think, no, you know what? My mom, my mom was working that night, oh. and it was just weird. It was the first time we weren't spending Thanksgiving at our our house, mm -hmm. 
uh, it was at whatever hotel they put us up in. We, I did the buffet. Oh, they didn't put me in a, in a hotel. No, because you had family there. It was what? it was delay. It was very convenient for you. And they were just cheap. Um, they only invited me because I had fa- I I didn't cost them a thing to get me there. I remember you got chummy with Christina Aguilera. Why wouldn't I? Uh, and sh- and she was uh, in her genie in a bottle fame. That was it was a huge huge song at the moment. Um, and I saw the opportunity, and I thought, I'm going to get in there now before she really blows right. up. And uh, boy, talk about a double entendre there. And uh, and it, uh, it she didn't she didn't go for it. I, it's hard to believe that she did not see a 17 year old Sam Levine as a viable relationship option. She sucks. She blew it. You didn't rub her the right way. Is that what you're saying? Nailed it. That's why we have you here. No, that was perfect. Thank you. Wait, weren't perfect. you in like this, the Pittsburgh like sparkle season? That was the next day. Okay. It was to celebrate the season. Celebrate parade. the season. I, I don't need to tell that story. This is we're talking about John here. Okay. Yes, sparkle I didn't get to spend parade. Thanksgiving with my family either. Uh, that's what because I was confusing it with because I remember because I'm from J- Jason and I are from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And he's like one of the when I first met him. He's like yeah. one of the few things I remember from Pittsburgh is he was in the celebrate the seasons parade and it yep. was like you and like wasn't it like Peter Tork? Uh, no, it was no. me and Judge Mills Lane. <laughs> and Christina Aguilera had been there the year before okay. because, as I'm sure you guys know, she is also yes, a Pittsburgh she's person. she's from Wexford, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, so after we did the Macy's Parade, I got to go home, have like a 2 p.m. dinner uh-huh. with, my, with my family, and then had to go straight to the airport to fly into Pittsburgh oh to do God. the Celebrate the Seasons Parade the next day, which, if you want to talk about <laughs> polar opposite differences between two and a half million people lining the streets of New York to 7,000 people <laughs> lining the streets of sad downtown Pittsburgh. <sighs> like, at least in New York, there were so many people there, and we were far enough away from the crowd and high up enough right. that we couldn't hear necessarily all of the people standing in the rainy street watching us going, who are you? <laughs> you suck. We couldn't really hear that. Yeah. In Pittsburgh, I got to have conversations with people. <laughs> They had me popped out of the hood of a limousine or out of the uh, sunroof of a limousine. Ooh, like Richie uh, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Straight up on the roof of this car, just sitting there as we're going down the street at three miles an hour. I'm like 10 feet away from people who are standing shoulder to shoulder, one person deep uh-huh. in this line of five miles or whatever. In Pittsburgh, they were probably drunk. I no, hope so because probably. they were merciless. How was the weather? Was it were you rained on? Like no rain, but it was very cold. Yeah. And I, because my mother, I let my mother dress me. She convinced me to wear a ridiculously stupid hat, like a like a like a jester hat. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures exist, ladies and gentlemen. What I'll find season them. does that represent? I will fucking find them. What is it? Is there like some sort of seasonal representation? It like- was winter. You were, okay, but well, that seems a little on the nose. It was the jester of winter. I was the jester of winter. I was the, <laughs> the winter Jew jester. of winter. <laughs> the masquerading Jew of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Straight from Squirrel Hill. Um, Sam, I have a funny story about my, uh, if you'd like to hear it, about my uh, Thanksgiving dinner. No, I'm sorry, we have no time oh, for your stories. Shit. So I want to talk about, of course I want you to tell it. So we were, uh, we were doing that sad buffet at the Waldorf or wherever they put us up. Uh-huh. And uh, and I was a little bummed by the fact that you know I wasn't getting to spend it with my family or anything, uh, but trying to find uh, you know the the good side in all of it. And as I was going down this line of beautiful food that was being displayed and and presented to us with, oh here's a, a duck infused turkey medallion with scallions and blah blah blah. And and every time I asked, oh what's this? They'd say, oh this is a um, you know a, a triple poached uh, truffle oil, yada, yada. It was the fanciest Thanksgiving dinner ever. And finally, I go up to the last uh, section, which was a, a giant ham. Yeah. And there was a large man who was uh, very serious. I said, and what's this? He said, that's ham. <laughs> oh, OK, great. I'll have some. Thank you. That's my story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I uh, I started that same day. Do you remember they had us on that like a welcome bus, a big like a tour bus yeah. where we all gathered with Kevin Bacon. With Kevin Bacon. Vern Troyer. Yeah. And so I get onto that bus and they have kind of food layouts mm-hmm. all over the bus and uh, there was this big plate of like muffins and stuff and I walk over and I pick up the muffin and I start unwrapping it and then 
Kevin Bacon turns and he goes, buddy, that's my food. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And then I like look behind me and realize there is a, an enormous plate of muffins and food. But I don't take full responsibility for steal, stealing uh, Kevin Bacon's food. He had so many muffins and pastries on this plate. Really? There's no way he was going to eat all of that. He was taking it home. It was for him and his brother, the Bacon brothers. He's bringing home the bacon. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. How has that movie not been made? I will. It it's will. It'll be, be a reality show about all of them, you know. All the Bacon brothers. Yeah, creating an album or something. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. God damn it. So yeah, I, you had the ham, I had the bacon. <laughs> this is so trafe. I'm being told by the viewing <laughs> audience that uh, my Christina Aguilera blowing up joke was too harsh. And uh, I will make no apologies for it for two reasons. One, she rebuffed my advances. And two, she's fine now. She's doing just fine. She, it doesn't matter what I say here on the internet. I don't think she's listening. I wouldn't she's worry about listening. it. She's not listening. And if she is listening, Apologize. I'm still available and I'm sorry. There you go. All right. I've made, I've made my peace with it. I want to get to the internets. Uh, they have questions for you that I cannot ignore anymore. Let's see what we've got here. Um, okay, let's talk about your film career. Chrysophus, at Chrysophus, wants to know, in Waiting, you had very few lines, which made your final freak out so hilarious. What was that experience like? Thank you, Chrysophus. Uh, it, was, it was great because I, I didn't have to uh, learn lines for most of the shoot, yeah. uh, which as we know as actors is not fun. No. Uh, we were shooting in New Orleans and every night the cast would get hammered Yeah. and we'd go out and party. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't really feel like I was even being uh, reckless or irresponsible. Because <laughs> you, be, you could show up hungover on film the next day and it Completely. would be fine. Yeah. Because no one could hear how raspy your voice was. Exactly, it was, it was the most fun movie shoot, yeah. I think. Now I mean, you shot that in pre-Katrina New Orleans. In indeed. Yeah, because Katrina happened like right after that, as yeah. I recall. Yeah. So uh, were you of age then? I don't think you were. I was 19. Oh dear. And they didn't check IDs no. at that point. I mean, you could drink in your car. Uh, they had these drive-through da daiquiris. I don't know if they still do. But I'm sure they do. You're, as long as the straw is out of your cup, yeah. even in the cup holder in the front seat, yeah. you're fine. Wow. If you get pulled over. God bless it. I, I remember the first time I worked uh, there, I remember realizing that I think New Orleans today yeah. is what vintage Vegas must have been like. Totally. Just absolute lawlessness. Free and wild. And I remember, and the people were very friendly and the food was amazing. And I remember talking to a cabbie at one point. I was like, you know, this, they, they're, they know how to do it right. Just like having this, these loose drinking laws and not checking IDs. And I feel like, I bet there's probably less crime because of that. And the cap, uh, the cabbie was like, murder capital of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that, uh, that's probably correct. I thought Detroit was the murder capital of the country. But it might be now, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he was lying. Yeah, what's that, J-Mac? Chicago? Chicago? Oh, yeah. don't say that. It changes every, we were both born in, yeah. in and around the Chicago area. That's right, Wheeling, Wheeling and I don't know. No, I would you know. It doesn't say it online. Like it says Chicago. It's really a city called Park Ridge. Okay. It was the actual city I was born in. Yeah. But my folks were living in uh, Evanston. Evanston. Yeah. I was conceived in Evanston, apparently. I probably was too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, folks. Evanston brings it out in you. Um, Literally. I have to go now. That's disgusting. These are our parents. Are your folks watching this, by the way? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? You didn't talk to him know. today? I didn't. You better have called your I, mother I today. left her a message. She wasn't, I think she's working She's right avoiding now. you? She's always working. <laughs> I'm seeing her later. Uh, if I can interject for a moment. Please. According to one study, St. Louis is currently the U.S. city with the highest murder rate. Really? Yeah. Yes. That sounds accurate to me because it's all those Cardinals fans who are deranged. Um, burn. Sick burn, St. Louis. Sick burn from this Cubs fan. How's it feel eating our shit? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. It's not going to happen right now. 23 and 6. Not going to happen. Um, <laughs> I want you to punctuate one of these with a fart. I got, I got, I'm really trying, right. but I got nothing in me. Literally. Just keep, keep working I got on it. nothing in me. Right. Uh, Can we get some beans for Sam, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. So, post Freaks and Geeks, you worked on the Gina Davis show. 
with Gina Davis, Mimi mm-hmm. Rogers, Peter Horton, Harlan Williams. <laughs> That's right. It was a hell of a cast. It was. Uh, do you, any any fun stories from that? You were still so young. What were you, 16, 15? 16, yeah. Oh. It was uh, it was really fun. She's so nice. She's the nicest, she tallest total woman. Sweet. Yeah. So tall. I used to come hang out with you on set. I was always blown away by how tall she was. Yeah, and and uh, Mensa member, just a remarkable right. person. And archer. she was also her archer. She had an archery thing set up mm-hmm. in the back of the, the stage. Yeah. I think the only movie she did any archery in is The Long Kiss Goodnight. Was it? Did she do archery in there? I feel like there's an archery scene in there. Wow. Maybe I'm misremembering it. It's a weirdly contrived Twenty years old, I don't know. Where they, uh, yeah. they were like... Can I get you some more water? Could I? That'd be great. Dr. Kenny Chen, oh. on the case. Thank you, Kenny Chen. Thank you, doctor. Um, don't forget to rip the label off first, right? Yeah, we are not sponsored by Kirkland. And, well, you might as well have the label <laughs> on there. Wait, we, this is Kirkland? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I know Disgusting. you only drink Volvic. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Um, oh, there's a question with a uh, Game of Thrones spoiler in it. Thanks a lot. No. Also Sisyphus. Um, uh, nope, that's another. Jesus, all these. Uh, ooh, it? okay, here we go. Corey Greenberg at Shave Blog <laughs> wants okay. to know. That seems appropriate with all the shaving talk. I guess so. <laughs> He's got a whole blog about it, though, apparently. Maybe he could be featured. It's yeah. got to be like hipster mustaches and yeah. shit like that, I hope. Beard right? wax. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. At Shave Blog wants to know. What was so upsetting to Sam that he and Mr. Fredericks talked about it in montage? I always assumed auto fellatio. That's not even a question, really. Yeah. I just wanted to read the words auto fellatio. And now I have, so we're moving on. That's my Transformers name. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, damn it. Um, Let's see what we got. No, no, uh, No other good... Oh, do you guys have anything for me? I haven't looked on uh, No questions? Nothing? Room? Nothing? Well, apparently we have questions that are just full of spoilers. Nah, just I don't want to hear any Game of Thrones Sisyphus. spoilers. Fine. I don't know how that could be a question to me. <laughs> I'm it, not in Game of Thrones. Someone referenced something that happened in Game of Thrones. Today? And then, I guess last week's. Oh, okay. Well, I saw Is that. Is that fair to, to talk about last week? Sometimes people let whole seasons go by before they catch up. Yeah. I don't know, that's a separate conversation about uh, what's the acceptable time frame before you can reference something. Um, Oh, okay, here's a good one. Have you seen a recent cut of 525.77? Someone saw an unfinished version at TIFF, that would be the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, Next Wave, years ago. Hashtag eager for an update. I have not, no, I I haven't seen it in literally 10 years, probably. All right. Uh, now that 525.77 is a, is a, uh, a, a biographical movie yeah. about Patrick Reed Johnson, who is himself a filmmaker. He did the film Angus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, Baby's and Day Out. Baby's Day Out. Oh, that's right. And he wrote uh, Dragonheart. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Should have turned my sound and off. Spaced Invaders. Uh, and I'll just keep listing his Please. Movies. And uh, yeah, so, so you star in this movie. Yeah. And uh, uh, it at points had uh, Christopher Lloyd mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, Austin Pendleton. That's right. Playing the same role, oh, right? Wasn't there a, a swap actor. out there? They, there was a swap. Yeah. I th- well, he he did a version of the movie as, as like a fake trailer or something like that. Yeah. And he got Christopher Lloyd to do that. Yeah. And then ultimately it was Austin it Pendleton. Was Austin but, Pendleton. But, yeah. That was, that was uh, uh, an amazing experience just in that I got to shoot in Chicago and I kept coming back for reshoots. And who, who got to come out and visit you in Chicago? Sammy Levine. That's right, I did. I remember, how, it was the first time I, I ever saw you drunk. You had uh, about a six pack of uh, Heineken's one night, I remember. It does not ring a bell, I'm not gonna lie to you. Clearly. It does not ring a bell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well I wasn't driving, we were uh, of age. That's right. At least I was. Were you of age then? I was 19, Do you know why that happened? Because we were there on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. That's, that's why. why that happened. That's why. That explains everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the place to be in St. Saint, Saint Patty's Day. Oh my God, Chicago. Chicago and St. Patty's Day, they dye the, the, the River, River Green. Green. Yeah, it's a fugitive, yeah. come on. Yeah. And who is it, I think it's Daniel Roebuck who asks, if they can dye the River Green one day a year, why can't they dye it blue every other day of the year? 
Good question, Daniel Under. Roebuck, and or Joe Pantoliano, or whoever asks that question in the movie. Um, if we don't talk a little bit about bones, the internet will go insane. Okay. So keeping in mind that I am a huge fan, uh -huh. let's talk a little bit about bones. I have no question. Uh, okay. Just Bone, talk about well, bones. Bones uh, is a is a crime solving show. No, I know what the show uh, is. It's like See? numbers, but instead of cr uh, solving crimes using numbers, they use bones. Bones. So huh. there's that. There is that. Um, I was on it for seven years. That is ridiculous. <laughs> a long time. How long you were on that show yeah. for? Uh, because you came in as a guest star with what was supposed to be a seven episode arc, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then you knew pretty quickly. I don't think this is just seven episodes. I think they uh, they deked me. They deked me. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, I think it was the second episode they they mm -hmm. offered me a regular role in that. Um, yeah. But I spent most of my twenties on that show, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. You had to have some fun. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was it was some crazy job security too. Yeah. Um, it's like I think it's still one of the most successful shows on television. Yeah, they're d pick they picked it up for another season. I think it's going to be half a season yeah. this time, yeah. but um, that'll be the twelfth season or something like that. That's wild. That's insane. That's, that those these are NCIS numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Um, but uh, very enjoyable experience being on that show. Good. Yeah, and uh, and then that's what gave you the security, the job security, to pursue this ridiculous lark. Yeah. of a writing directing career. Yeah. How is that going by the way? I have not heard much. Uh, it is uh, other than my own intro that I wrote for you. <laughs> yeah, it no, it, it's it's been it's been a, a crazy experience just having um, having worked on features that that got made. I never I never would have imagined yeah. when we first wrote our, our, our first spec which was the $40,000 man. Which sold to New Line. Which sold to New Line. Um, but uh, that was something that we did, we made half of the, we wrote half of that movie. Yeah. And it was uh, about the guy that came before the $6 million man. It was right. the stupidest, <laughs> stupidest <laughs> movie. I mean, very funny, yeah. but, but very stupid. Yeah. And, uh, and we took a year break on that uh, because we were like, we gotta, you know, focus on our own careers and this and that. and then. I guess Jonathan reread it and was like, this is really funny, we should finish it. And so we did, and didn't think anything would happen mm -hmm. of it and, it, and it launched our careers, which was That's wild. Great. And so, uh, so then what came after uh, that? Was it Horrible Bosses, or was there an interim? We sold a couple other movies, we did some rewrites, because what they do is basically, you go on a litany of general meetings once yeah. you sell something and a lot of the times they have open writing assignments that they present to you see if you're interested in, in something like that and we were so new to the game yeah. that we had an idea for uh, uh, we had a pitch that that we came up with that we were going to tell them about in our general meetings we told someone at Mandeville I remember uh -huh. and, and uh, this is like our second general that we had ever taken and we pitched this idea that we had for another movie and they were like, oh yeah, that sounds great. We'd love to do something like that. And then we left the meeting and we were like, we just sold our second movie. <laughs> Which is not the case. No. It's, no. They, say, they say they're interested in everything that you pitch them in in general. Oh. So we learned very quickly that yeah. uh, appearances That's... can be deceiving. <laughs> uh, they sure can. Um, from my life is an errant venture. That's the person's name? That's a YouTube name. All right. Has a question. Let's see. Uh, ask him what he thinks about long running shows axing a lot of its cast so it can extend its run another season or seasons. Now, nah, fuck that question. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what it means. And also, its was misspelled in both of the. Uh, so, fuck that guy. Nope, sorry. Your life is an errant venture. Wow. Errant. You are Get it harsh together. today. You know why? I was just in Florida. <laughs> no, you know what? I think Errant oh, Venture is Christina Aguilar's Twitter handle. So. <laughs> then I dodged a bullet. Uh, from Gavin Windsor. Ooh, this is a weird question. <laughs> Do you think network television is dead or dying? 
Uh, no, I don't. No, I, yeah, no. I think I think quite the opposite. I think, I think network isn't. television is in a renaissance right now. Yeah, well, or not network, but well, television. I guess television. I specific television. I mean, well, there cable. Some, cable yeah. is pushing network television to places that I think network television isn't comfortable going right. to at this point. Right. Uh, but what's funny is that they put out shows that seem like they would be very edgy and, and cable-y, mm -hmm. but they never actually are. No. Because you can't, you there's can't. so many things you can't do. Right. That, uh, but I don't, I don't think it will die, because I think ultimately if they reach a point where it's like crisis mode, they will figure out a way to say fuck on television. Right. Well, they said shit on NYPD Blue. That's right, and they showed the what uh, Charlotte Ross's bo uh, butt I, no, they showed Dennis uh, uh, Franz's butt, and that, I can't, it haunts me to this day. It's weird that you remember Dennis Franz's and not Charlotte, uh, what's her name, Ross, Rossi, Ross, from NYPD Blue. Mm. Her bare butt, look it up, guys. You hear that? I look don't have up. to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's your background on your, uh, on your iPhone, right? He knows. And on the desktop and right. on the laptop. Man, that was a good day for all of us. Except me, apparently. Just remember that Dennis Franz ass. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, well, you look at a show like um, uh, Last Man on Earth, mm -hmm. I think that's revitalizing the face of network comedy. So good. It's and so good. I, what's, what's great is that network has one or two shows uh, in their roster that they don't really care about numbers, yeah. but they do care about critical accolades. And that allows really cool, different shows like Last Man on Earth, I Absolutely. think, to thrive. Absolutely. Can you imagine if uh, Freaks and Geeks were on now in that scenario? What's funny yeah. is it's a chicken or egg scenario yeah. where I think that Freaks, I don't know how, if what would have happened yeah. because I, I do think that it helped pave the way for irreverent, have, smart, subversive yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've read that too in a number of articles over the years that they say that it being like if it were on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't even know if it is. Like it would have a hundred percent fresh rating. Oh yeah. And yet, it was canceled so you know unceremoniously, and uh, and then that became the thing I think that kept um, Thirty Rock on yeah. for so long was it was winning all these Emmys. There wasn't no one could say a bad thing about it. It had you know a million people watching it for sure. And it just wasn't ever getting the numbers but they couldn't cancel it because people like the people who did watch it right. loved it so much. It helps. Yeah. It certainly helps. So I guess you're welcome network television? Everyone. You're welcome everyone. Yeah. Damn it. So good. Um hey, here's a a total left field one. So in researching you, yes. <clears throat> here's a something that came out of your IMDb trivia. Okay experienced his first unemployment due to his choice to decline to work on a 2006 pilot because the producers failed to meet his quote, thereby establishing his credibility as a bankable television personality. Sounds like my mom. Nancy again. wrote that, right? Yeah. That's what he wrote there. Did Nancy write this? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who else could have written something <laughs> like that. It's a weird, it's a weird thing to put in, in a trivia. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, Obviously, it was written by even... a person who literally has no idea how show business works. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. I, I don't even know what show they're referring to. I yeah. Know, I have no idea. Yeah. Let's go ahead and assume it was Veep. Off by a good six years there, but let's just assume it's Veep. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Kitchen Confidential. You still have your regular Sunday brunches with Bradley Cooper, right? We do. Okay. We do. We uh, play golf together. You don't play golf. I See, don't. I know this is a lie. That's where your story has holes. Uh, Can you imagine if Kitchen Confidential were still on the air? How that would have affected the meteoric rise of Bradley Cooper? I mean, it probably would have dampened it because he wouldn't have been able to do movies. That's so. what I'm talking about. Uh, Much in the way that uh, uh, Franco and Rogan and Siegel and people ask me that all the time. They're like, oh man, why did that show get canceled? I'm like, so you could have giant movie stars. Because yeah. when, when you're locked into an hour long show, a, multi, or a single cam hour long, you don't have a lot of options. You don't have any time to do anything. You have a four-month window yeah. to do other stuff. Yeah. Uh, what it, was working on Kitchen like for you, though? It was fun. I, I got to pretend to look like I knew how to cook. 
Yeah. I didn't actually learn to cook. I just learned to make fire come up from the pans and flip <laughs> things. All the m most fun parts of cooking. Yeah. Chopping things really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I got to kiss Jamie King, which was cool. That's great. That's great. A lot of men would enjoy that, I'm sure. Yeah. And women. She's beautiful. Um, I don't know. Yeah. What do you want to know about Kitchen I don't, Confidential? I don't know, man. Um, I guess. Uh, are you sad that it's uh, not on the air anymore? Are they bringing it back anytime soon? I'm <laughs> really sad. Uh, that was the uh, third time you and I worked together. Uh, I had no actual lines in the show, That's but right. one time when. Uh, um, who was directing? Uh, oh, Fred Savage. That's right. Was directing that episode, and I showed up just to say hello to you because mm -hmm. I was on the lot for something else. And then they snuck me in as an uh, extra, as a featured background extra. Guy I've eating cheeseburger or something like that. No, they just <laughs> sat me right behind you, I think, in a bar sequence. Oh, were you a patron? You were yeah, you I was just someone at the bar. That's funny. Just someone at the bar, and they positioned me so you can clearly see me behind you. Uh huh. Uh, but you, oh, I guess. I'd love to see that. Yeah. I'd love to see a screen cap of that. Yeah. A girl I was seeing stole my uh, Catching Confidential DVDs really? years ago, so I can't even do it myself. I'd have to go buy Was them. this part of the paring down of your DVD collection? Nope. Different girl. Different girl. I'm sorry, and I'm also flattered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got them, so I'll have to get them back from her. Um, hey, let's talk about the, thir the fourth and final time you and I worked together, yeah. which was you behind the camera on a little movie called Vacation. But wait, we're gonna hold that thought. Okay. This is what we call a hook in the ad world. We say, will John Daly talk about what it was like writing and directing Vacation? Find out after these messages from our sponsor. <clears throat> hey, today's show is sponsored by Howl.fm. It's like Netflix for podcasts. Only with How Premium, you can listen to the Comedy Bang Bang 2016 live tour. That's right, the tour is sold out everywhere, but you at home can hear every single performance on Howl the next day. This year, Paul F. Tompkins, Lauren Lapkus, and Neil Campbell will be along for the ride, and there will surely be a few surprise guests as well. You can listen to the 19 tour stops and 22 performances from the Comedy Bang Bang tour live only on Howl. Now, in addition to this 2016 live tour, with Hal Premium, you can get 42 more Comedy Bang Bang specials, along with exclusive access to more than 120 hours of original miniseries and audio documentaries and over 90 comedy albums. 90. That's more than one a day. That's more than two a day for a whole month. My God. New episodes and albums are released every week. You can get access to all this exclusive content on your iPhone, your Android phone, and on the web for only $4.99 per month. That's more than less than the co a cost of a cup of coffee a week. Especially if you're drinking what I drink. I don't drink coffee, Sam. What else you got? If you use the promo code Kevin, here's what else I got. You know what you'll get? A free trial for a whole month. Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it, internet. A full month. You can listen to 90 comedy albums that whole month, free, if you use the promo code Kevin. So to redeem this promo code, create your account on the web at howl.fm and enter the code Kevin at checkout. Remember to hear all the Comedy Bang Bang live tour along with dozens of original audio miniseries and comedy albums. Go to howl.fm, that's H-O-W-L dot F-M. Use the promo code Kevin for a one month free trial. And if you have not done it by the time this episode finishes, you are just a straight up dummy. That's how you read ads. That was great. In, that was the uh, best thing I've ever seen you do. Business. Really? That was really That's good. That's probably accurate, too. And I even flooded a little bit in the there. The promo code should be Sam, though. Let's be, let's be honest. For right today, now. it should be. Yeah. But if they listen to this any other day. I guess it'd be confusing. Yeah. Actually, for today, it should be mom, right? Because it's Mother's Day. Not enough words. No. Not try enough try all three. Not enough letters. You might get you know, lucky. Speaking of which, uh, it is still Mother's Day, so once again, I'd like to check in with my mom, who I know is watching. So everyone else, just stop listening, watching for a second. How you doing, Ma? How you liking this show? John's great, isn't he? God, I can't believe I've known him as long as I have. He's a 13-year-old. I was a 16-year-old. What did we know? <sighs> He's really like a little brother to me. Did Even you like when we talked about him masturbating? Nah. <laughs> 
Even though really now he's more like a big brother because he's so fucking tall. It's really uncomfortable. All right, everyone else can come back in. Um, it's weird how long we've known each other yeah. for such a, a transitional time in our lives. Sexually? Obviously. <laughs> Where else could I have been going with that? That's why I had a woman's voice. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you had this thing with your dad. Mm. I wasn't just with your dad. You had this obsession with earlobes. Do you remember your earlobe obsession as a, as a, a small teenage boy? Uh, I liked squeezing earlobes. You liked yeah. squeezing earlobes, and you loved mine because I got these big meaty earlobes. Yeah. And you would occasionally just run up to me on set and just squeeze the living daylights out of my uh -huh. earlobe and then run away laughing. What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Well, uh, it made me feel useful. All right. Felt like I had something to offer you other than just being a scene partner. I'm going to squeeze those earlobes at some point during so this. So you and I are going to have a, a tearful embrace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass gas, mm -hmm. and you're going to squeeze an earlobe. If I squeeze your earlobe, <clears throat> maybe it'll make you pass gas. That's true. I had not thought finger, of that. Yeah. I had not thought of that. Um, oh, what? incredible Burt Wonderstone. Yeah. Wait, no, we're going to get back to vacation, which I teased before the break, but uh -huh. we're not going to come right back to it. I want to talk about the incredible Burt Wonderstone because you got really? to live out. Yeah, okay. we're not. We're not going to have to talk about the movie itself. We're okay. going to talk about Jim Carrey. All right. Because you got to live out what was every teenage boy's fantasy. Yeah. Getting to hang out with Jim Carrey. It was the coolest. Yeah. He uh, he was so nice too, yeah. and exactly what you would imagine, which is <clears throat> full of energy. Yeah. Uh, crazy, but in yeah. the best possible way. Yeah. Uh, we went to his house at one point and were riffing with him and pitching him jokes and he was like acting them out. That's amazing. Uh, like a see and say. Like we would say anything, <laughs> we would just like do a bit. Yeah. And it was, uh, I came. Oh. I came. Wow. It was a cream dream for me. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And were you guys rolling on that? <laughs> then he then he imitated me coming in a much funnier Jim Carrey <laughs> way. <Ooh. Yeah. laughs> I think you you nailed it on your own. Yeah. 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 Um, I uh, that was when we shot the Freaks and Geeks pilot. Uh, that was definitely uh, you know when I found out that Judd was from the Cable Guy. Right. Judd and he had this you know long standing relationship with Jim. Uh, one of the last days we shot on the pilot, uh, Judd hands me this handwritten note that was from Jim Carrey. And it said, um, <clears throat> to Sam, the best piece of advice I can give you is keep the jokes dirty and your nuts clean. Sweet. And that's true. I found that to be absolutely accurate. Yeah. Yeah. That's sweet. Cable. I remember he gave me a cable company hat from <clears throat> the, the set. From Cable Guy? Yeah. Wow. Which I still have somewhere. And should, you, I should you opted wearing. to wear a different trucker uh, hat today. I, yeah. Like a uh, presidential nominee Donald Trump? With the trucker hats. Is this, is this a trucker hat, really, though? I mean, I feel like the bill is bigger and douchier than... Corey, Jamie, what do you guys think? What does it say on the hat? It's uh, The Optimist. It's a restaurant in Atlanta that I it's frequent. I feel like it's too fashionable to be like a traditional trucker hat. Internet, go ahead and sound off. Is John Daly currently wearing a trucker's hat or not? Zero replies. Zero replies. <laughs> um, uh, well, okay, we, talk, we teased it before, but now let's definitely talk about Vacation, which was your uh, studio feature film directorial debut with Jonathan Goldstein, yeah. uh, your, your life partner, Jonathan Goldstein. That's right. How the hell does that happen? Well, we had been in the New Line family for a very long time at that point. We had written several movies with them, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and they seemed to really like us. And we, we made a short film called Audio Tour for Funny or Die with yeah. Will Forte. <clears throat> and that was kind of our, our way in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when we wrote the movie, we didn't know that we were gonna be directing it. We only pitched ourselves to direct after the fact because yeah. they asked, we thought jokingly, like, would you guys wanna direct this? And we were like, sure we would. <laughs> but they were serious. And so, uh, so then we, we realized that half of what we wrote would be really difficult to actually direct. We had whitewater rafting, a lot of ambitious stuff that we would have just left to the to the director. Sure. Whoever that Fuck was. Fuck that guy, it's his problem now. Exactly. But 
So then we, you know, that was that was part of the challenge of actually directing. But it was it was it was great. We had to prove ourselves as one mind to the DGA, which mm -hmm. is something you have to do when you're a directing team. And oh. apparently it's very hard to, to get uh, approved as a directing team. The Coen brothers couldn't do it, and that's why they would switch off on directing and producing credits. Wow. Yeah. How about that? And, and we, uh, when we were at the DGA, the guys that were <coughs> also pitching themselves to direct a movie uh, before us were identical twins, and we were like, "Fuck this! We're never gonna, we're never gonna do it." But they actually didn't get it, and we got it. And it was a, it was a panel full of every director that you could recognize: John Favreau and Taylor Hackford and John Singleton. It was like insane, and uh, and they asked us the trick question, which is, if you guys are ever applying for a dual directing partnership, you should know the answer, which is. If you guys are doing, see if you can answer this correctly. If yeah. you, if you're, if if the schedule's crazy and you need to, uh, one, you need to split up, and one of you needs to do uh, uh, second team, or or second uh, unit, unit, team. and first unit. How do you decide who does which, and what would the answer be, Sammy? We'll never split up because we're of a hive mind. That's right. We do the same unit. Fuck! I'm ready to co-direct. Now you just need a partner. Uh, yep. So uh, you get a second unit director is really the answer, I think, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, the, a lot of the times uh, the stunt coordinator does the oh. second unit stuff because a lot of it is stunt work. Sure. Driving stuff. That, sure. That's nice. Isn't that interesting? I'm glad you guys got it right. Yeah. You got it right, right? We got it right. Good. We got the answer right. <sighs> DJ, you just gave DJ secrets away on the internet, by the way. Are they going to find me. you for that? Come at me, guys. Oh, boy. So you've got the DGA coming after you. I got Christina Aguilera coming after me. One of us is doing a lot better in this scenario. <laughs> uh, <I don't> know. <laughs> um, so uh, in the vacation movie, yes, there was this heavily touted Freaks and Geeks reunion. I know, I know. That's uh, that was my bad. Uh, what happened was we wrote a scene that didn't work. <laughs> it had nothing to do I with you. I think it worked great. Had nothing to do with you. But uh, when we were test screening, even before we, we tested it, we kind of knew that, that it was, it, it, at that point in the movie, you needed to like get the, bring the stakes up and, yeah. and, and not have another giant set piece, which was funny because it was the most expensive set piece in the movie. It was this. Yeah, really we were out there like, for what, four days? Yeah, filled with like 800 extras yeah. and all sorts of crazy shit going on. Um, but we ultimately, you know, my love of you and Martin uh, was surpassed by my love of uh, <laughs> making the best possible movie I could make. And uh, uh, joking aside, I, I have seen that. Actually, anyone who wants to can see that. It's on the DVD. That's right. The, the whole deleted sequence there. Um, Rob Hubel's also in it. The great really Rob funny. Hubel, who's yeah. always funny. Um, and I can say, uh, personal feelings aside, you did make the right choice. Thank you. Martin and I really, we stunk it up. And by Martin and me, I mean me. I really, I really failed you in that scene, and that's why it didn't work. Look, uh, if you had been pitching uh, what you were pitching before, I think it would have worked. If yeah. It was, if it was that promo that you did, I think we would have. We get that it curled there. up paper back to me because <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was the first time John's respected me in seventeen. We years. can do a reshoot of Vacation now. Right on now. On these cameras, yeah. We've got it. I'll just put it in. Yeah. Oh boy, that was a fun. That was a fun time in uh, good old Hotlanta. It was. Yeah. And it was cold when we were shooting. Remember that? It was really cold, and I, you were wearing a seashell suit. A seashell vest with uh, board shorts and nothing and else. Sandals. Nothing yeah. else. Uh, I don't know if you remember, and why would you know this? I had been shooting on a series in uh, L.A., mm -hmm. and uh, I shot until like 11 o'clock at night on the Warner Brothers stage, and then had a car take me directly to the airport where I slept on the three-hour flight from L.A. into right. Atlanta and then went directly from the airport to the vacation set. Fancy. To start shooting. And that was when I, and then we worked a full day until nightfall. Mm -hmm. And then I will never forget getting back to my hotel room and like finally getting to lay down in bed. That may have been the most tired I've ever been in my life. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then they cut the scene so no one else other than, do you know, I... You just seemed a little too tired. I really did, didn't I? You seemed too tired. I let it read on my face. Yeah. I appeared I on... Scene, you I saw you've like seen a, it? Uh, oh, that's right. You saw a test screening of it. of it. Yeah, so I saw it. Yeah. So there's one. Two. He was with me. Okay. 
I did a, an episode of uh, At Midnight a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and that was the day that Vacation dropped on DVD. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they let me give them the stuff I wanted to say in my intro, I said that they could, you could see me on Kevin Pollock's chat show and today in the deleted scenes <laughs> of the Vacation DVD. Thanks for the out plug. Out on DVD and Blu-ray. I was really proud. Appreciate Not every that. day you get to plug a movie that uh -huh. you've been cut out of. <laughs> but for you, Johnny D, there's and, nothing I And then you do. pitched Howl.TV. And then I pitched Howl.FM. FM, I'm sorry. Don't, don't fuck this up. They sorry. keep the lights on here. They do not keep the lights on here. That is the West Side Comedy Theater, who we thank every week for their generosity of letting us stink this place up with my gas. I've really been trying, and I'm almost, I'm worried I'm going to shit myself. That would be great, too, If honestly. I keep pushing like this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jewish, you know, mm -hmm. happens. Hey, did you know... Ah, dramatic pause. Did you know that VH1, they, they compiled the definitive list a couple of years ago <laughs> of the 100 greatest kid no. stars. Did you know that? I did. They compiled a list. It's definitive. Do you know what number you came in at? I think it's in the 90s. Nope. 67. Really? 67. Do you know who's number 99? Sam Levine. This guy. Nice. We both cracked the list. Woo woo! We really did it. Thank you, VH1. Do you know how I made the list? I agreed to come in and be a talking head. <laughs> so they threw me a bone and gave me 99. <laughs> <laughs> in front of the green screen? In front of the green screen. I was up in like Santa Clarita. Saying stuff like, Drew Barrymore was so cute in yeah. E.T. Yep, that's exactly right. That's how I made the list. Nice. I, I think I did a talking head on You did do too. a talking head on that too. That's how we, well, no, you got, I think they, you got 67 because you were an actual like child star. Oh, stop it. Well, you were. The self deprecating I don't know how to react to, There's to not, stuff like that. It's not self-deprecating. I'm talking about you. You were an actual child star. Yeah. You, you were in lots of stuff well before you were 18. I guess, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I was a star, though. I was well, a, a working child actor. That's what they mean by star. You were. How has that colored your adulthood, being a working teenage actor? Well, I do heroin. Obviously. <laughs> Uh, I, it, I, you know, you grow up as, as you know, you grow up, uh, quickly yeah. for better or worse. Um, some, and you see the downside of that with some former child stars where they, they, uh, they're a mess and, uh, and you kind of have to navigate the business world at a much younger age, which can be daunting and, and, uh, too much for, for people. Yeah. Not us, though. No. Not us. No. You know why? Uh, good parents. Good parents. That's what it all comes down good to. Good mom. Yeah. You hear that, Michael Lohan? You fucking blew it. Wow. You're really yep. pissing off everyone. And who's it, Dina? Is that the mother? Dina Lohan? Take a hike. Look what you guys did there. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Why? Why? Why would I do it? Why would I go after the Lohans? Low-hanging fruit. That's why, Kenny. Low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a the Oops. series that follows making the bacon. We got Wahlburgers making the bacon. And low low hanging fruit. fruit. Yeah, that's like my dad's joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's like Roseanne's nuts when she had the nut farm in Hawaii. Uh huh. It's a we're we own Wednesday nights on A and E with this lineup. I'm I'm confident that we do. Uh, it's Kelsey Lane wants to know, maybe in the building, you've done it all. Writing, directing, acting, felching. No, I added that one. <laughs> Which is your favorite and why? Felching. <laughs> for, those, uh, for those unfamiliar with the term, I will offer no explanation. Just Google don't. that and my apologies in advance. Yeah, Google image it. <laughs> uh, and then uh -huh. Google image uh, pink sock. <laughs> All right. John, this is a family show our parents are watching. What? Uh, writing, directing, acting, et cetera, et cetera. Which is your favorite and why? Do you have a favorite? I mean, do you, uh, do you miss uh, acting? I mean, I know, honestly, the last several years have been uber-focused for you on yeah. writing and directing. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even talked about the upcoming stuff, and quite frankly, I don't want to because you are under lock and key. You literally can't even talk about it legally. I can. It'll just be a boring conversation. Okay. But 
I uh, I like I like all of it. I really do. I it's all very different. Um, there, it's it's funny because each facet has its own type of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, in acting, you have the freedom to not create the dialogue generally or yeah. worry about the directing, and, yeah. and you have the freedom just to focus on you and your own performance. Whereas with directing, you have the freedom basically to, to do everything, which is, which is very gratifying. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I would say writing is probably the least fun okay. of all of them. Okay, um, which is the thing you do the most these days? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, but it, it, it's, it's the least fun because it, it feels the most like actual work. Because sure. you're sitting in it. I mean, and, and obviously it's still so much more fun than so much other, so many other jobs. Of course. Because you're still creating. But it, it is the most, uh, you have to diligently, you know, you set, you set deadlines, deadlines for and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's impossible to answer. But I, I okay. do, I enjoy all of it very okay. much. And I do miss acting. I did a guest spot on Fresh Off the Boat last oh. week. And uh, it was a lot of fun just to be able to be in front of the camera. That's again. fantastic. Yeah. You don't look Asian, uh, so I'm confused. Is that part? Oh, is that part of the? Is that part of the, the show? We'll come back to it. You can tell me off air. You can tell me off air. Um, let's see if there's anything we missed here. <clears throat> Cloudy with a chance of meatballs, too. Mm -hmm. Our foray into uh, animation. Yeah. Which, you know, in, the, in the talking about freedom, you really can do anything you want. You really can. Uh, Puns. Yeah. Too stupid for live action. Yeah. Uh, really funny visual gags. Yeah. Uh, the one thing you can't do is uh, felch. <laughs> Because it's for kids. You know, we'd moved on from that. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you know, it was it was nice to go from an R-rated comedy to uh, to a PG sure comedy for the kids. Yeah, that is nice. I guess, and also you can you can write whatever you want, and then on the day you don't have like angry crew members, you know, lugging, you know, a hundred miles of cable up the side of a mountain because you guys thought it would be funny to you know show a mountain lion having diarrhea exactly. or something. Cursing your names. I'd love to see that, though. <laughs> Why a mountain lion? Why not? Uh, it, yeah, no, instead you have uh, angry animators having to... No, what's, what's funny is the animators really do run the show. <clears throat> um, sometimes more so than the directors. The really? people that storyboard it, because they're directing in their own way. They're, yeah. they're dictating what the performance is and how the jokes land. Yeah. And a lot of the time, they are storyboarding and animating sequences that you are writing at the same time. So you present them with a thing, and they're like, oh, cool, but this is what we did. And it's like, oh, yeah. all right, well, use what you want. Huh. Yeah. That, uh, that sounds too convoluted for me. I don't think I'm ever going to get into the animation world. You know, at least not on the writing side. Got a good voice for it. No, nah, I'm all horse today. I don't know what's going on. I think it's the allergies. You could play a horse. <clears throat> Or a zebra. Uh, where did Corey go? Jesus Christ. He got for, bored. He's here for one thing. I was going to go to you guys. Any, any questions for the, the famous JFD? Oh. Oh, yeah. He got to work with so many great people. Like, because um, Burt Wonderstone, like, Alan Alda was in that, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Or no. Uh, yeah. Alan Arkin. Not Alan, Alan Arkin. Arkin. I'm sorry. Alan Alda. Yes, I, you know what I meant. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah, I any good uh, like an Alan Arkin yeah. or Steve Buscemi stories? Um, great Felchers. You know, this is why. This is why, folks. He's a professional. You and your felching. I started it. They're uh, they are pros and so funny and talented. And I felt uh, like a criminal making them say some of the stupid shit that they said. <laughs> They've said worse. <laughs> you are no criminal. Uh, I think, and this is not me being nice, uh, I think uh, Burt Wonderstone is an underrated film. 
Really? I do. I do. I think, and I've seen it uh, at least two or three times since I saw it with you at the big premiere. I will say there are a few gags in it that I'm very proud of. As well, you the should. last, the last thing being one of them, the where there, where we see behind the scenes of yeah. the disappearing audience, and it was the closest thing to a Holocaust joke that we, that we got to slide into that. Movie. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if you remember what the scene I, oh, was. Oh, I do. Yeah. I don't want to relive it because I, I worry people haven't seen it. So I want them to see it and they can enjoy it for themselves. All right. Fair yeah, enough. There you go. Um, I, I cannot believe uh, we've been talking for almost 90 full minutes, if you can believe really? that. Yeah. Can you believe it's been almost 90 I gotta minutes? I got to see my mom. You do. You got to get out of here. You got to go see Nancy. You got to high five uh, Sweet Bobby Daly. Mm -hmm. But you're not free and clear just yet. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you bothered to watch any of the old episodes of this show before coming on. Maybe you have a, a Bones-like policy with it, like I do. Um, but uh, all of our guests have to play the Larry King game okay. before they can get the hell out of here. And uh, here's how the Larry King game is played. It's a, it's a real quick aside. Uh, when, uh, when Larry would do his interviews, um, right before he would throw to the phone, sometimes he would shoot up to the camera and just throw a little something out there that we didn't need to know. A little TMI moment from Larry. The example that uh, Kevin Pollock always likes to give is uh, <clears throat> Thanksgiving before the guests arrive, I like to teabag the gravy boats. Oh, Ocus, go. Um, so you're going to do a bad Larry King impression. Okay. You're going to give us a TMI moment about Larry that the audience did not need about to know. About Larry. Yes, about okay. Larry, not about you. Uh, he's very old, so it could be about his first ride on a pterodactyl. Anything you want to do in that realm is fine. Uh, he's, prob he's most definitely senile. He doesn't remember things accurately. Oh. It's fine. He's, he's doing just fine. All right. And, uh, and then you're going to throw to the phones. And if the name of the city you go to happens to have a funny sounding name, all the better. There's no time limit to this. They can take uh, 10 seconds or 30 minutes, whatever you want to do. But when you're ready, you're going to give me your Larry King game right down the barrel of that camera right there. And then I throw to the phones. And then you throw to the phones. Tonight we talk about, oh, it's Harvey Firestein. <laughs> uh, David. Uh, <laughs> Why did I just send my mother to Atlanta? I gotta call my mother. Ah, I gotta forget my lawyer. Uh, uh, all right, so that's not, that's not a good Larry. No, no, we want, it has to be bad. It has bad. to be bad. It has to be bad. I'll just keep Cannot be good. Stay, stay in Firestein. I, uh, I uh, went to get my rectal exam and I accidentally felched. I don't think I know what the word spells me. <laughs> Go for the Back to you, uh, Wheeling, Illinois. I don't, I, that was terrible. No, it's fine. Uh, There's no wrong way to play that game. Okay. That's the idea. All right. Anyone can play it. Jamie Foxx uh, created the game. It's fun at parties. There's, because there's no wrong way to, to eat a Reese's or play the Larry King game. Clearly, I haven't seen enough Larry King because that voice was. It's, he's an old Jewish man. So you're in the realm. So is Harvey Firestein. So are you. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you noticed. Um, buddy, I adore you. You are uh, truly uh, one of my oldest, dearest friends, and I love you. And thank you for coming on love and being you, buddy. with me for Absolutely. I'm so happy to finally do it. Yeah. Yeah. This was great. And now sit there for uh, one minute while I wrap things up real no, quick, sorry. if you don't mind. Okay. No, I'm out. I'm well, out. that's John Daly. Um, that's it. This is the end of uh, KPCS number 267. 267. God damn it, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I cannot thank you, the viewer slash listener, enough for spending this very silly time with uh, me and my guest, John Daly. Uh, I, of course, cannot have possibly done this alone. There are so many people to thank, uh, starting with our intrepid crew, Jason McIntyre, Mike Duman, Samantha Ward on makeup, Dr. Kenny Chen. Um, also, uh, thank you so much to Corey Levin and Jamie Foxx for sitting here with me and monitoring the chats and making sure that uh, I didn't say anything too ridiculous. Uh, I want to thank everyone at the West Side Theater uh, for letting us do the show here. Thank everyone at Earwolf for putting the show out there. And of course, the chat show himself, Kevin Pollock, who uh, lets me uh, come in here and be silly when he is traveling and uh, making the money. And uh, thanks again to my guest, John Daly. Uh, you are uh, fucking fantastic. This was a lot of fun for me. So until next time, and as always, fuck off.